Okay, first of all, uh, we acknowledge that the land upon which we gather is traditional unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq First Nation. Call to order declarations of conflict of interest. Any declarations? See and none. Approval of agenda, there's four A, B, C, D, E, F, and then we have uh, number five. We have to move into closed session to discuss a couple of matters. Um, I also want to note that Councillors Duran and McAleer are calling. Did we lose someone? Hello. And who's on the line? John, John McAleer. Okay, John. So, John. John, you should mute mute your phone, and when you want to speak, um, let the mayor know. Did you get that, John? Councillor McAleer? Okay. Okay, we're going to assume that he did get that message. And also, stu two staff members are calling in, Ramona Doyle and Scott Adams, on two items in the agenda. Ramona's doing some contract work for us. That's the reason I refer to as a staff. Okay, need someone to move the agenda. Moved by Councillor Beck, seconded by Councillor McKinnon. All in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, so we'll go with the first one, 4A, planning resolutions, appointment of subcommittee in regards to the official plan rollout, Eagle View pic pictometry, contract approval. Sure, you can. You want to come over to this side? Moved by Councillor Jankoff and sec seconded by Councillor McCabe that the mayor establish a subcommittee comprising of members of the Planning and Heritage Committee, interested members of the Planning Board and Heritage Board, to be educated on the content of the draft official plan before the scheduled public rollout public consultation. Okay. Motions on the floor. Okay. Yeah. Councillor Ramsey, do you want to go for? No. Councillor Twig, turn up your mic, please. Okay. Uh, what does this consist of? Is this something new, or? Like a subcommittee, I, I I know we always had the public input and all that. I I just wonder if someone could uh, sort of explain that to me. Councillor Ramsey, any other councils? Please refer the questions to the deputy mayor because she is the chair of planning, and there's Alex Forbes here, so she will address it f first. Okay. okay. Thank you, and thank you, um, Councillor Ramsey, for your question. I do have Mr. Forbes here who can weigh in a little bit on this as well, but I'll do my best to explain. We have a huge undertaking to, that's happening over the next several months, and that is the reopening of our official plan. It's going to consist of many, many, many sessions with the, uh, with the residents of Charlottetown, but we also need to meet several times over the coming weeks before it's ready to even start heading out to the public with consultation. And our fear was these sometimes twice, three times a week to meet, it was a big commitment to put onto our planning board. So we wanted to put it out there to our existing planning board members who wanted to be able to participate along with the committee members because it's a, it is a huge ask of those. Now, at the end of the day, it's really just more information. Anybody can join in and listen online as we do this, but it's just a big commitment to ask of those that are able and willing to put that amount of time in as we prepare the first steps of the official plan. Now, Mr. Forbes, if you can add anything to that, that would be great. Mr. Forbes. Uh, Your Worship, look, that was a good overview, but I just, for the benefit of Council, th this is just the front end of it. These are the, the key people like Planning Chair, Planning Committee, uh, the Planning Board. These are the committees that uh, oversee planning the most, and it's just an opportunity for them to get uh, an understanding in regard to what we're proposing in the official plan. 
Now, prior to going out to the public, we'll have briefing sessions with council, all of council, because before you head out into the wards, you're going to want to know what's you know what's being proposed as well. So, it's just a matter of having some key people uh, that uh, uh, deal with uh, development to have uh, uh, a fairly robust understanding in regard to what uh, what's going to be proposed before we go to the public. Thank you, Your Worship. Good, Councillor um, Deputy, could you please turn off your mic? <clears throat> Uh, Councillor Tweel, did you have a question? And then Councillor Bernard. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, so it will consist of Planning Board and Heritage Board. Um, and what, will that also be people from the community that will be sitting on this community or on this committee as well? Um, like you say, there's a lot of work to do on the front end, but. I wonder, is it is it going to be uh, uh, from the public at large, resident members that are going to be sitting on this committee, and will this committee uh, be separate from the traditional planning committee and from the heritage committee? So just trying to get a clarification as to, for the purposes of the official plan, and the review of the zoning and development bylaw. Um, this subcommittee is a different entity in and of itself, correct? Uh, thank you. Um, Councilor thank you, Councillor Tweel, for your questions. And as I had said, the resident board members from Planning Board are all, it's open to any of them to attend. It's a big commitment as we prepare for this. In terms of other other residents of Charlottetown, they are going to be given much opportunity. When we once we hit the public, we're going to be breaking it down into ward ward open um, community meetings as well as general meetings in Holy. This is a big this is a a big endeavor for us to take on, and we need to get it right. So this is just the the front end of it to prepare to even get to the stage to once to get it out to the public. Okay. Can, can, yep, just Councilor Bernard and then we can come back to you. Just turn off your mic. There we go. Um, Madam Chair, I'm just wondering, the official plan that we're, we're embarking on, so East Royalty was just done not that long ago. So is, is East Royalty going to be part of this official plan again? I believe it's the entire official plan of the city of Charlottetown in its entirety because in its entirety it has not been opened up since 1999. So yes, it is the entire official plan of the city that's being looked at. So, so even though we just did East Rollies, we're going to do it again? I would say... I would say... Uh, those the the things that maybe are are new and recent and they don't need to be addressed but there's going to be things that have to have some continuity and consistency i would think throughout the entire city when it comes to um to our you know our green footprint i mean alex you can probably speak better to this but overall it's looking at the city as a whole we're growing faster than we you know than we're able to keep up to i mean this year alone we had what was it, um, $202 million of permits has, has gone through the city of Charlottetown. So, uh, Mr. Forbes, if you can add any more to Councilor Bernard's um, clear question so he can have some better clarity. Mr. Forbes. Uh, to your worship, uh, as you will recollect, even in my time here, uh, in the official plan you have documents called a secondary plan, and the secondary plans were downtown, the waterfront, uh, Eastern Gateway, and uh, East Royalty. So they're all secondary plans. Secondary plans are, it's a tool to uh, 
to drill down a lot deeper in a specific area, and the reason we do that is because that's where the development is occurring. The official plan by its nature is more general, it's a higher level, but the consultants have, uh, are mindful of that in those areas, there will be minor changes. Uh, you know, we'll get, we'll get some input from the public, whether it's in East Royalty or in the 500 lot area or anywhere in the city, and that's up to council in regard to adjust. But uh, those more current plans, there likely won't be as much change in them but other than the overarching policy uh, statements. The OP is really high level. Uh, we are not dealing with the zoning bylaw now. The zoning bylaw changes come in later after you adopt the official plan. So uh, we'll go through the official plan. There's a, a number of things that have occurred since the last time it was reviewed. Affordable housing is at the top of the list. Climate change is up there. And, and there's just a number of issues that have impact every ward. So uh, 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 some of the statements that will be coming from the fire department or the uh, uh, public safety issues will all be addressed in the OP. And then my, my last comment is, is that this go around for the official plan, uh, we do have the benefit of a growth management study that was prepared by my colleague in behind me. Uh, and that indicates it, it's going to tell, uh, I'll, it's going to paint a picture in regard to how the city has to think its way through the future. Uh, because I think in, re, uh, in regard to your particular ward, I think people would have thought 10 years ago uh, that, that we had years and years and years to uh, be able to build out. We're going through East Royalty very quickly and this council or a future council is going to have to deal with the fact that you're going to hit the border or the boundary and then the question is uh, how does this group and the community and planning think about ways to grow to slow that pressure on that of, of available vacant land that's out there uh, before we have to make some much bigger decisions. So uh, we will be, uh, a part of this process is updating people in regard to what the growth management study is indicating in regard to the, our options for how we grow, whether it's uh, lower density, medium density, uh, higher density, or combination thereof, and I suspect you'll be seeing a combination thereof, and it's for uh, the, the council and the community to work out uh, how that will look uh, so that we can uh, grow efficiently moving into the future. Thank you, Your Worship. Okay. Councilor Twill, did you have another? Now, Councilor Twill, just remember what the Deputy Mayor said, that this group is just working with the, the, the developers or the developers. That's not my house. Yep. Can someone? Yep. Yep. Is that Bobby? Bobby, uh, Councilor Duran, can you just mute? I am mute. Uh, that's not me. Okay. Whoever it is, just please mute. So again, this is just a group that's working with with the uh, the group that is working with the city on the official plan. There will be public consultation. Just so I understand the process, so the mayor establishes a subcommittee. It doesn't go back to council for a vote. It doesn't. No. It doesn't, because it's right in the resolution. It said the mayor establishes a subcommittee, so it does not come back to council yeah. to be ratified. So, Councilor Twill, it will be a working group with the planning committee. No, no, I'm just talking about the process. Whether or not a resolution is required to ratify the the uh, the subcommittee. Yep. Yeah. It's just a working group. It's yeah, a working group subcommittee is, is used there. It should be a working group to establish a working group comprised of members of the Planning and Heritage Committee, interested mem members of the Planning Board and Heritage Board to be educated on the content. But it does not require a resolution, right? No, no. Okay. Question? Thank you. I uh, just wanted to say thank you to uh, the manager and, and Madam Terry, your worship. Uh, that makes a lot of sense uh, because we did drill down and we did have the public out at East Raleigh for a two-year period, actually, and the uh, development is taking off now, and I'd hate to go you know, next week or two weeks' time and start telling them we're going to make a lot of changes. So it uh, makes sense that you already drilled down. It's just an overview. So thank you. What last question there, Councilor? Uh, just on, on East Royalty, if you look at East Royalty, from a traditional sense, the lots were much bigger. And then with the changes that were made, I guess, two or three years ago, the lots are a lot smaller. So um, 
is there is there uh, discussions or an appetite? I don't know. Uh, yourself or Councilor Bernard. I mean, those lots are pretty small, and I've I've heard a lot of feedback over the last two or three years about the size of those lots compared to the size of the lots that you know once existed. I mean, if you look at East Royalty, you know, versus Earl Arsenal was with us today. I'm sure he'd be horrified at the at, at the size of those lots. I mean, they're very very small, and they're on top of one another. And it's certainly not uh, uh, consistent with the way the lots were laid out in previous years. So, is that on the table, um, Deputy? Thank you, um, thank you, Councillor Twill, for your question. Um, the official plan, everything, everything will be looked at. Um, the the lens to which we applied the official plan was very different in 1999 than it will be today. We're going to be applying an accessibility lens. We have truth and reconciliation to look at, climate change, amongst the other things that Mr. Forbes has, has mentioned. And we also need to remember that the city has grown um, quite a bit over the years. So all of those things are going to be looked at. But if you're wondering if there's an answer to that question now, we haven't started the process yet. You're going to be part of that process. You're going to be part of making those decisions. And we're not there yet. I hope that that gave a little bit of clarification to where we're at with the official plan. Comprehensive review. Good. Question? Yeah, One point? I just want to say, yeah. So the rules and bylaws that we have now for the lot sizes and the subdivisions would have been voted on by council. Uh, so really, when the developer comes in, and we have one going on in uh, Winslow West Road now, where he's not going as small as he ha uh, is allowed to go. I mean, it's up to the developer how big those lots he wants to make them and what price he wants to put on them. Mm -hmm. The smaller lots, uh, that's up to the developer. He's following the guidelines that have been set out by council, the size of the lot. So they have, they have a minimum and a maximum. So. Okay, yeah, we, I think we covered it. Question? Question called? Yeah, let's, let's just get a vote on this. All those in favor of uh, the resolution, please raise your hand. Okay, 8-0. Oh, Councillor McAleer, yay or nay? Yeah, yay, I'm good. Councillor yeah. Drawn, yay or nay? In favor. Okay, 10 zero. Go ahead. Reminder to everyone, every time this working group meets, it will be open to the public to listen on YouTube or so those notices will always be there so anybody can listen none of these will be behind closed doors so just so that you folks all know that that anybody can tune in and and be up to date and that invitation goes out to all councillors if they want to show up and sit in on in the meetings moved by councillor Jankov and seconded by Councillor McCabe, that the contract with Eagle View Pictometry Canada to provide orthophotography mapping for the City of Charlottetown be flown in 2023 and 2025, and that we pay $18,650.03 plus HST per year for this service over a four-year period between 2023 and 2026 be approved, and the mayor and CAO are hereby authorized to execute standard contracts and agreements to implement this resolution. I have a question. Councilor Tweel. So, so this contract here with the city of Charlottetown, is this the latest in technology? Um, Chair planning, is this the latest in technology? Is this consistent with uh, what other jurisdictions are doing across the country and North America, worldwide for that matter. It is the latest in, in, in the technology. It's not, it's not something that's not um, consistent with other jurisdictions. Jurisdictions. Thank you, Councillor Twill. From, from anything, um, any research and anything that I've heard from the staff or anything about this, this is, this is topped Top of the line. This is what the city needs as we grow. This is a this is a um, a great opportunity for the city. It's when I mean I think the I think that the manager of planning could um, let us know 
how long it's been since we've had this and how important it is to have this done on a, on a regular basis. And so if you have anything else you wanted to add to this, Mr. Forbes. Mr. Forbes, please share us your, your wisdom. Uh, Your Worship, uh, this is a company that we've been working with for, for some time, and they've been very, I would say, very accommodating, at least with our department. Uh, over the years, they've allowed us to fly the city in a given year, and then they've allowed me to uh, pay for half of it one year and pay the other half the other year. So uh, the, the reason why uh, we t tend to update that photography every two years, and again, you know, it, it's, that is the mapping that we use every day. Uh, I can look at Donna's house. I can look in the mayor's backyard. I can see everything. Uh, and, uh, but, but the point is that, that it's, it's quite valuable for, for this next flown flights because of what happened to our community last uh, fall in regard to the storm. We may be using that information for, for insurance claims. Uh, and we use it also to validate uh, when things show up. If it's a development, it's an enforcement tool. It's a multi-pronged uh, tool that we have. <laughs> So we have historically uh, signed on with them for two years because uh, we if we get it flown in 2023, we would have paid for it in 2024. But they've offered me the opportunity to balance out my budget uh, and to get on to their schedule. The reason it's here this evening is that they've got everybody lined up on Nova Scotia and New Brunswick and nobody in PEI was on the list and I had to bring this forward to get on their list. So uh, I think it's a great opportunity j just to work it in my budget. We use it every day. Fire department uses it. Police department uses it. It is a corporate tool. Thank you, Your Worship. Councillor McCabe. To the manager's point, I wanted to make sure that we knew that although this is coming through planning, it is something that the whole corporation uses and it plugs into the um, system we've invested in um, in the last couple of years, GSI or whatever. Yeah. GIS, GSI, GPI, GI Joe. Um, but at the end of the day, it, it's something that the whole corporation benefits from. So it's not just something um, for planning. Councilor Twill, you want to wrap it up? So, okay. So um, it is used by all departments, including the fire department and the police department, correct? Okay. Um, so this. This, this resolution here is basically sole so sourcing as opposed to opening it up for tender. Is that correct? Uh, Your Worship, I'd say it's, it's a continuation of a long-standing contract that we have. And I, I'm not even certain. I mean, there, there could be other providers, but this is not the type of service where there's a lot of people provide this type of service. There's another element to this uh, contract, which is the pictometry. Pictometry, there's the orthophotography, but pictometry is, is a tool that allows you to zoom in and to, to look at properties uh, with oblique views. So uh, this isn't the type of service that a lot of people provide. I, and uh, frankly, I, I guess I, I don't know who else. I'm sure there are other people that do it, but uh, we are lining up with the, the provider that's primarily used in New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, and we'd be the smallest entity getting on that list. So uh, I, I just throw that out to you. It's an extension of an, a long-standing contract. It comes up every two years. They ask, do we want to be on their list to uh, for uh, updating our technology? My fear would be if we used another uh, tool, uh, that our old mapping then may, may not align with the new mapping because it's all you know what technology is like, so I, I don't know all of the answers to that, but it's just a matter of it's the extension of our existing long-standing contract with this company. Thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, yeah we're going with a standing order. Okay, I, oh. Councilor McKinnon. Oh, Hold on. Thank you. Just a question for the Chair, and I do see the great benefit with this orthophotography. I've used it in, in uh, other uh, jobs, and it's great, but just for clarity, when it says 18650 per year, for the service over four years. So is it 18,000 for each year for four years or is it 18,000 for each flight? I Your Worship, it's $18,000 per year. Uh, so it's, it's just that it would be double that rate every time you fly it. So it would be 36,000 if we just bought it for the one year. 
uh, but but what they're allowing us to do is uh, because they've done it before for me I don't have a huge budget <laughs> uh, they just allow me to build that into my budget and then it's not like a big surprise that comes up uh, two years hence and then I have to ask for another thirty six thousand dollars and the council of the day goes wow uh, uh, it, it, where did this come from and it's it, it just it's a tool we use every two years so just continuation of that thank you okay questions called all those I favor. One. Oh, who's that? Councilor Drawn? Thank you, Mayor Brown. I'm just wondering, are, are, are we following the policy and procedures of, of going to tender on, on something like this? Uh, I know it's a it's a worthwhile cause. I, I know Mr. Forbes uses it pretty near every day, and it was helpful. But is there anybody else out there? Did we ever look at it? Uh, you know, it just, it just uh, doesn't seem that we're going out to to tender, I guess, for me. So, thank you. Mr. Forbes, I think you'll have to repeat what you said there. Uh, yeah, look, I, I'm not exactly certain on the tendering policy. My, my fear is that if we go out to tender, we may miss the opportunity to get it flown, and I, I have no idea whether there's even another service provider, but I'm not the tendering expert. <laughs> Councilor Drawn, did you hear his answer? Yes, I did. Thank you. Okay. Questions called? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Councillor McAleer, yay or nay? Uh, I'm good, yes. Councillor Duran, yay or nay? Not in favor. Okay, Councillor Duran. Uh, we're just moving on. Let, let's go to the next resolution. Okay. And this is under human resources? Yes, it is, Your Worship. Thank you, Mr. Forbes. <clears throat> there was, an, there was a, a, an error in the resolution last month, so this is just to correct the error, Your Worship. That the resolution of January 9th, 2023, stating that the City of Charlottetown accept the proposed 2% increase to management non-union employee salaries for 2023 as per the attached document effective January 9th, 2023, be rescinded and replaced with the following, that the City of Charlottetown accept the proposed 2% increase to management non-union employees' salaries for 2023 as per the attached document effective January 1st, 2023. Questions called? Okay. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Councilor McAleer. Yeah. Yes. Councilor Drawn? In favor. Okay. 10 0. Do you have another one there, Donna? Yes, Your Worship. Is that for water and. Water so and sewer utility Richard? number one. Moved by Councilor Jankov and Council, second by Councilor Matarch. That the City of Charlottetown accept the tender from Summerside Chrysler Dodge in the amount of $79,860 plus applicable taxes for the supply of one 2023 5500 series crew cab chassis, and that the mayor and CAO are hereby authorized to execute standard contracts and agreements to implement this recommendation. Any, any questions? Oh, Councillor Bernard. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, Who's the who's chair of water and sewer? Who am I asking this to? Councillor Duran. Councillor Duran. Yeah. Councillor Duran, I'm just wondering, um, do we know what the markup was on this particular vehicle? No, I, I, it was on our website, so it did go out to tender, and we only had one person um, submit a bid, and it seemed to be in line for what the manager thought uh, would be for this type of vehicle. Okay. Um, I don't know if we know where any markup on any other vehicle would be as well, so I, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to vote in favor of it, but I do have a problem with... Uh, we went with Enterprise Fleet Management in the past. We did it once, and we saved 21000 per vehicle, as we know, um, and the Automobile Dealers Association is... People know there's supposed to be all kinds of bidders in these bids. So here we are, 
the next vehicle would go on, and there's one bidder. And back, we're back to buying our vehicles from Summerside. So uh, do you have any, do you know any reason why nobody from Charlottetown would have bid on this vehicle? Well, we, we discussed this at our committee meeting, and uh, it is advertised. Now, whether or not anybody from Charlottetown can get this vehicle at this point in time would be a question. I'm, I'm sure it's not sitting somewhere. Um, you know, in a parking lot, it's a very uh, big, big type of truck. Uh, it's a 5,500. So I don't know whether it's just Summerside can get this access to this truck or not, or or why they didn't uh, bid on it. And getting back to your first question, you know, I'm not sure if, if we ever uh, would find a markup on a vehicle, whether it be a tractor or, or what, uh, you know, what the markup is. Well, that's, uh, we that, that, it, that was in the contract, and the markups were in on the one with Enterprise Fleet Management looked after for us. We knew the markup. And that was one of the things we yeah. had all the information. But anyway, that's that's the past. I just yeah. really wondered why. Yeah, I know. We, we moved switched, on. Why we're not getting so more bidders. We, we did put this out to tender. And like I said, the only uh, company that um, looked for, you know, a, a bid was Summerside Chrysler. So that's all That's all we can do with that. Yeah. And that's what used to happen the last four years. That's why we, I think we, we looked at the other method. But anyway, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Councilor Twill. What we're doing here tonight, as I understand it, we are following the procurement policy, correct? Yes. By, by going to the, the open tender process. Um, maybe you can help me, uh, CAO Donna. Uh, when, when finance does bring in the procurement bylaw, then there's no real room to maneuver. You must go to open tender and you can't sole source and have that flexibility. Is that safe to say? Not necessarily. There, you'll still be able to st sole source for those for those um, issues, like maybe the pictometry one, things like that, where there there are very there are limited companies. You'll you know you'll always have to sole source um, particular goods and services, but for the most I mean for the most part we, we don't sole source anymore. Um, it's on occasion that we would. We've just uh, gone through water and sewer. Um, all companies, island, automobile companies, had an opportunity to bid, right? All Atlantic so, Canadians so, did. So therefore, we, we're, we're not going to be open to criticism, saying, well, you know, uh, the opportunity is there, the option was there, and, and the onus is on you as to whether or not you want to submit a competitive bid. Sir. Correct? Correct. Okay. Mr. McEwen, um, your $79,860, that was budgeted. That's within your budget, correct? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. okay. Questions called? Yes. All those in favor? Raise your hand, please. Councillor Duran? In favor. Councillor McAleer? In favor. Okay, carried. Moved by Councillor Bernard and seconded by Councillor Matart that the City of Shell town except the RFP from CBCL Limited in the amount of $88,950 plus applicable taxes for engineering services related to digester inspections of the Shawtown Pollution Control Plant and that the mayor and CEO are hereby authorized to execute standard contracts and agreements to implement this resolution. I think that was an addition to the agenda. Um, and just to clarify, Mr. McCune, just one bidder? Yes. Councillor Twill? Uh, thank you. So, so the question I have is, is this more along the lines of an operational issue as opposed to a capital project? Um, you're doing an inspection, so it's just... Uh, maintenance issue, more or less, as opposed to purchasing new equipment? It'll be about a, uh, I don't, it possibly a million dollar exercise. We do it about every seven to 10 years. 
and there may be some repairs or changes to the digesters, but it's a significant expense for us. It'd be a significant operational expense for us. But this expense here, approximately 90000 this isn't a major expense in this particular resolution. This is primarily maintenance. Is that this correct? is it for the engineering services. Pardon me? This is for the engineering services, not for any of the work. It's to, uh, the oh, design. So this sets the stage for a capital project. Yes. Okay. So just to follow up, is this um, also to accommodate the sludge that's coming across the bridge from... Uh, from Stratford? There's a small percentage of it. Well, I mean, Stratford's uh, 10 to 15 percent per year, but they've only been online for a third of it, so they're about 5 percent of the material that we'll need to take care of from the digester during the removal. Okay. Are they make enough financial contribution, uh, Mr. Manager of Water and Sewer? Yes, the part of the agreement is that they cover costs either through our app. Uh, operational budget or the financing of capital projects to the tune of their percentage of usage of the plant, which is about 15 percent. Yeah. Okay, they're paying for it. Okay, is there a question? Is there a question? Questions, Questions called. called. Okay, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Councillor Duran, yay or nay? In favor. Councillor McAleer? Yes, in favor. 10 okay, 0. Thank you there, Mr. McEwen. Well, moved by Councillor Bernard and seconded by Councillor McKinnon. That the City of Charlottetown approve, sign, and adopt the amendments to the transit agreement with Trias Transit, Town of Stratford, and Town of Cornwall, and that the Mayor and CAO are hereby authorized to execute standard contracts and agreements to implement this resolution. So we do have Ramona online. If there are any questions to Ramona or about the agreement, Excuse Councilor Bernard. Yep. Thank you. Um, just to let everybody know, if you you probably read the package, but anyway, just to uh, give you the Reader's Digest version, uh, three changes is the extra ten years, which added to the contract. Um, it's an extra clause, exit clause. It used to be six months. It's now a year, which I think benefits both and uh, tries to provide advance notice in writing of any uh, changes to the fees, any <coughs> agreements that they may have with, with, a, with another entity. So, Your Worship, and, and like you say, we have Ramona on the line. If there's uh, any questions? Yes, yeah. Uh, Councilor McLear or Councilor Tron, I can't see you, so do you have any questions? I'll go to you guys first. Yeah, no. Good. Councilor Duran? Uh Thank you, Mayor Brown. I did. Uh, I did ask a question at our committee. There, is there is there any bus service across Canada making any money? Uh, because this is a major investment for for the city. And uh, Jessica get back to me today in an email and and kindly pointed out that there was no no place making any money on this. So, you know, that kind of alleviated any fears I had with locking into a long contract. So. You know, I'm happy to say I, I have the information now and I can I can support this. So I just like to say thank you. Okay, thank you. Councilor Twill. Yep. Thank you. So does this agreement allow for the expansion of routes, addition of new routes? Um, you know, we, we've heard over the last two to three years, uh, residents in different parts of the city are saying they'd like to see... Uh, uh, city of Charlottetown expand their routes. They'd like to see city of Charlottetown expand the hours, hours of operation. So does this agreement allow for that? <coughs> Councilor Duran? Oh, sorry, Councilor yeah, Bernard. The, the changes, uh, Councilor Twill, are the three that I just outlined. Everything else stays the same. So we have been adding to it. We have been adding routes. We have been adding bus shelters. We have been making improvements, and we will continue to make improvements as was try a T3. Okay, so once again, if we, you know, I think there's proposed new routes now that the uh, construction of the roundabout of Belvedere has been completed. Uh, we, we, we can 
the city of Charlottetown does have the flexibility to add new routes and Always new did. new neighborhoods and new communities. Always did. And, oh, no, that's fine. I'm just trying to understand. What? We got to pay for it. Yeah. yeah, I know we got to pay for it, but, but this contract and the way it's written allows for that. So we're not going to be coming back at a later date looking to amend this particular contract to allow for the expansion of new routes, uh, hours of operation, and anything else that the, the residents would like to like to see. Council Bernard. These three amendments is what I outlined in this contract. Okay. That's the only changes. Okay. All right. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Question? Question's called. Question's called. Question's All those in favor, please raise your hand. Councilor McAleer, we or no? In yes, in favor. Councilor Duran? In favor. Okay, 10 0. Thank you, Donald. Moved by Councilor Beck and seconded by <coughs> Councilor Jankov that Council accept the amendments to the public appointment policy P admin 02 as per the attached. Your Worship, if I could just add that these uh, amendments were made as a result of the changes to the procedural bylaw, which you had <coughs> approved in December. Okay. Did we lose Ramona? Yep. Yep. <coughs> yeah, she said signing okay. off. Okay. Question? question Go ahead, Councillor Twill. You got a question? You, uh, Chair Beck, my question is. Um, this was supposed to come to council, I believe, a couple of weeks ago. Um, was there any <coughs> amendments or changes made to the original um, uh, policy that you were bringing forward a couple couple of weeks ago? No. It's it's the same. No. Thank you. Okay. Questions, call. Questions call. Okay. Uh oh. Oh, good. Just Councillor Matark. Uh, just so I understand, uh, the, the biggest change then in this is for the appointment of the advisory uh, boards. Uh, so much like the procedure bylaw change that we made, this will be going back to the mayor to pick uh, advisory board membership. Yeah, that's correct, Councillor Matart. Um, and then the submissions would come, the, you would bring back, the mayor would bring back a list of submissions, all the applications would be done, uh, open to the public to serve on the various uh, committees and that sort of thing, and then they come back. The mayor would make a list, bring it back. There would be opportunity as well under the, uh, the way it is, there is opportunity for discussion at that time, but uh, this is largely the work being done there. Just to follow up to that question, um, historically going back to pre-2018, was that the way it was as well? Are we also reverting back to uh, previous uh, procedure? Correct. Thank you. Yep. Councillor Ramsey. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, are we still going with the same amount of advisory groups? Because I think 2018, we do we have 10, Your Worship, or close to it? We're looking at the same number uh, that exists between 2018 and 2022, the last council. So that would be your planning board, your heritage board, your design review board, your uh, seniors, seniors, seniors engagement, youth advisor. Oh, sorry. Civic. Councilor Beck, go ahead. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Civic disabilities. Arts. So it's really just an update. A lot of it was a lot of it had uh, council council advisory committee in there and things like that, right? And then so there's no change in terms of what the committees are, or the process, that sort of thing. It's just updating a little bit more in terms of what clarifying, eliminating some of the stuff that didn't have to be in there before. Councilor yep. Matard.
process because the process is going back to the mayor will in fact select the advisory committee membership based on the applications that are committed. And always looking for advice from councillors sure. and our HR department. So I, I realized that it was probably the uh, advisory uh, council prior to that. So yes, the language and the wording is changing, but the process is changing as well. Okay, thank you. Question. So just to follow up, Councilor Matart, uh, Chair Beck, so this does not require uh, a resolution of council. Yes, your committee, like if, if for example, the planning board, those yeah. names will come back yeah. to council. Okay. The no, heritage board will come back to council. I'm talking the, the other. Uh, the uh, senior engagement um, all of committee? All of them. So they, all, they yeah. come back yeah. for council to ratify by resolution? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What number is it? Yeah, nineteen point one in the in the uh, document there, Councilor Twill. Okay. The question's called. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Councilor Duran. In favor. Councilor McAleer. In favor. Ten zero. Moved by Councillor Jan Jankoff and seconded by Councillor McCabe. Whereas the Federation of Canadian Mun Municipalities, FCM, represents the interests of member municipalities on policy and program matters that fall within federal jurisdiction, and whereas, whereas FCM's board of directors is comprised of elected municipal officials from all regions and sizes of communities to form a broad base of support and provide FCM with the united voice required to carry out the municipal message to the federal government, be it resolved that the Shawtown City Council endorsed Councillor Terry Bernard to stand for election on FCM's Board of Directors for the period in January 2023 and ending May 2023. Be it further resolved that Council assume all costs associated with Councillor Bernard attending FCM Boards of Directors meetings. Okay, thank you, Donna. Okay, question called? Question, Councillor Twill. Yeah. So, this this ends in May, um, and one thing I'd like to uh, bring to everyone's attention: I strongly believe that, regardless of who it is, that if you're a member of the PEI Federation Municipalities Board, that it that it's a dual role. You should be sitting on both the FCM and the Federation, regardless of who it is, whether it's myself or any other members of council. Because the last thing <clears throat> you want is two members attending a board meeting at the Federation Municipalities and you only have one vote. So I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. I'm fine with the resolution now because it's uh, on an interim basis. But uh, please give that some thought when we uh, come around. In Toronto? Well, and not only for Toronto, but provincially here as well okay okay question can i just ask a question go ahead sir um i'm just wondering like when, when this comes up again in would all of council be able to put their name forward and vote on it or 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 what is this just filling in for a couple of months or i'm just wondering like you know if other people want to apply you know yeah to be open to everybody Councilor. Councillor Duran, this will come up at the FCM annual meeting in Toronto. When we break out into our caucuses, there's the Atlantic caucus, where there's Prince Edward Island that gets together, uh, Nova Scotia, all the provinces. That's where we have the next vote in Toronto. It won't be here in Charlottetown. It will be... Tonight is only until May... May, th May May 30th. It's, yeah, but I think this was put out to everybody. I think he's asking. It was, and, and yeah, you, email several responses. Uh, Donna, you emailed? You sent out the email? There were three counselors, there were three counselors looked to. Yeah. I think that's what he's asking was. Is that is that what you're asking, Councillor Duran? How many? Exactly. In case other people wanted to apply, like is there a... You know, criteria or something, put your name forward, come and vote on it, you know. That's what yeah. I'm asking. Yeah, C the CAO sent out an email 
to gauge interest. Th three, three responded, and uh, now we have Councillor Bernard in front of us uh, for the vote. And then, as I said, we'll meet again, the meeting in Toronto for the FCM annual meeting. There will be another vote that will be for one year. It's one year of appointment. Sure, I, I understand that. It's yeah. just that I, I, I don't remember voting or anything, so uh, that's why I asked. Yeah. You know, do we get to vote for this, or or did you just pick it, sort of thing? Yeah, yeah. We we picked a person, and the and tonight you get to vote. And then in June you get to vote again. Members of the F yeah. Once we go to FCM in June, then there's a whole other brand new vote. And there's only one representative from all of PEI, so it might not end up being somebody from the Charlottetown Council because somebody else could run from Summerside or any other municipality. So there's only one rep for all of PEI. So in this instance, no one else, no other municipality put anyone forward. So for the short term, Terry Bernard will be representing Prince Edward Island on the FCM until May until the next conference when there's a vote, and we don't know who else is going to be running then. And anybody can put their name forward, I believe. Okay, Councilor Twill. Thank you. So any anyone else can put their name, as far as this council goes, back or later on in May to be submitted to uh, the FCM board, or the FCM convention. You have to be in Toronto to vote, yeah. I understand right. that, yeah. but, but. Yeah, this is just for the interim. This is not for the vote at the convention. That's why it says January 2023 and ending May 2023, because May is the end of May, end of May to June is the FCM. Yeah. Okay, that's Good. fine. Good. Question called? Question called. All the... Councillor McAleer. Uh, in favor. Councillor Duran. In favor. Okay. Do you have another resolution? Yes. <laughs> moved by, uh, moved by Councillor Machar. Get plugged in there, Donna. Moved by Councillor Machar and seconded by Councillor Tweel. The Council appoint Philip Mat Matuswich as the Chair of the Charlottetown Civic Centre Management Inc. CCMI Board for a three-year term effective immediately. And further, the, the resolution dated August 8th, 2022, were by John Abbott's CCMI board appointment extension to expire December 31st, 2023, be rescinded. Council, uh, Deputy, Deputy Mayor Yankoff, it's Philip. Could you please help us? I always. Um, his name is Phil Matasevich. And my son had his wife as his grade one teacher, and they got they were taught through phonetics how to pronounce it. So it's a Mata Savage. Okay, Councillor Twill. Not so much with regards to this resolution, but I'd like to get a report sometime from the uh, uh, from the uh, what's taking place at the. Board of Directors level at, and staff level at the uh, credit, I call it the East Link Center, thank you. Uh, I'd like to get a report as to what's happening because it, it, it just seems like, and this is not a criticism or, or it's just an observation, it just seems like every time you turn around there's a, there's a diff, different, uh, different personnel occupying different positions on this board, and I'd like to get a handle on what's taking place there, uh, to get a better understanding as to you know what's happening, and not just you know just voting by resolution to replace someone. I'd like to get a report as to what's actually taking place at, at the uh, East Link Center. Thank you, Council Ramsey. Is that economic development? Everybody's off. Good. Uh, yes, it is, Your Worship. And uh, there is changeover over there. Our former GM is no longer there because of health reasons, as we found out at our last meeting. Uh, my question is, this person that we're appointing tonight, 
Is he going to be the city representative? He is the city rep. So there's him and Wayne Long? No. Him, Jeremy, there's Philip, Jeremy uh, McFadgen. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thane Arsenal. Arsenal, yes. And then we also have uh, Wayne Long. We have the majority shareholder. We have the majority shareholder That's shareholder right. rights on that yep. board. And Councilor Trio, we'll uh, I'll try and get more information for you on your question of book the turnover and things along that line yeah. at the East Link. Thank you. Uh, because there seems to be, and again, it's not a criticism, but just my observations. There seems to be a lot of turnover in the last year or so. So I try to get a handle as to what's taking place. Well, Councillor Twill, one thing I want to say is that uh, John Abbott, who's served the board, you know how many years he served on that board, and now he stepped up to act as general manager to carry through the Canada Games, the U Sports. So a big thank you for John, and I think we should be all thanking him for reaching out to go beyond the call of duty, and uh, it, it just shows his his love and concern for that facility. So. John is one of the guys, um, is, is a gentleman that I, I, I know Councillor Tweedle, it's not, I'm not criticizing what you're saying, I'm just saying um, he stepped up and I think we're in good hands for the Canada Games and U Sports and hopefully we'll be able to find a general manager. So just a question, uh, Your Worship, if, or is it possible? Go ahead. Um, uh, December 2023, um, um, uh, John Abbott, um, I, I guess in, in the interim, will there be some some thought to, you know, GM uh, beyond that? Um, sure. I guess that's a... Um, Councillor Ramsey, as Chair of Economic Development, could you respond? Yes, uh, meeting with John and sitting with John at hockey games and all that, uh, there is some issues going on, but we are looking for people right now. We're looking for a new GM. As I said, the other situation, our former GN, GM just come up late last week and uh, things along that line, so we are looking at that. And, just, and I echo your thoughts too, your worship on John Abbott. John does a great job. And... Councillor Beck and I were both at the Panther game in the weekend, and the new clock looks fantastic there. So that's underway, too, and you just got in 20 minutes before the Panthers dropped the puck, I guess. They got her all working. So things are looking up. There's always going to be issues no matter what department you're into and uh, for staffing and all that, but uh, the, we are looking at other people. Thank you. And we'll leave that to the board. That's the board. That's up to the board. And so it was you and you. Councillor Beck that got the free tickets for... Friday night's game? Uh, I'm Mayor Brown. <laughs> uh, duly note that, please. <laughs> Question called? Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, uh, is it, it's me, sorry. Um, is this one of the boards that falls under the appointment uh, policy, the... the uh, Civic Center Management Board is uh, it's, it doesn't fall. How does how does that or where does that fall under? How does that happen? Donna, uh, names would come forward and they would be voted on by council as the who 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 you're putting on the CADC board or on the C um, on the Carry Board or East Link Board or uh, Surf Board or. Same process at end of last. Yes. Yes. Uh, no, some, some of the boards are, sorry, some of the boards are, um, have their own appointments. Um, some of the boards have their own, uh, somebody gets appointed like to the airport authority. They are appointed for a three year term. Uh, or, and, and that uh, these boards don't always match council's term of office because, because the, that policy particularly applies to task forces and those types of and um, that created by council, whereas these are outside boards. Yeah, just, uh... 
just to clarify that, if you think of it, any any board that is you know like an NGO, it's a non-government organization. It's, it has its own it has its own um, board of directors and its own minutes and its, and its own bylaws. So those are the those would be the organizations that although we would submit names to go onto their boards, they're not our. They're not our bylaws, they're theirs, so we have to adhere to our appointments to around their bylaws. So, so. Yeah, thank you, Deputy Mayor. So just so I understand, and I'm just trying to understand the process here, so we have so many spots on the airport authority, we have so many spots on CADC, we have so many spots on the East Link Center Board, but we ultimately decide as council who are those members that are going to be sitting on those spots. Okay. And that application process be, is ongoing, beginning sometime soon. When is that? Now that we have the public appointment policy in place, HR will start doing a call out. That's when the communication yeah. start. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Called? You get a question? Uh, Go ahead. No, I always thought that the uh, Civic Center Board and East Link were under finance, not economic development. And I think if you check the terms of reference, you'll find that. I think you're right. So, okay. anyway. I think you're right. Yeah, thank you for that clarification. So, okay, we have a new policy when it comes to public appointments. Um, so, will council be notified on the front end so that there might be people in the week that we know in the community that would be advantageous to a board of that, uh, you know, that nature. Um, because what I'm finding is, is number one, um, when developments are happening, and I, I'm, again, I'm not trying to be critical of the of the East Center East Center East Link Center board, but you know, you find this stuff out on the street. Like, we're not notified as a council changes are taking place. Someone's left or someone's there. You could, and the same could be said for the previous general manager. I had no clue that the previous general manager is no longer on that board. Um, you know, again, you find out on the street. So I, I think we need a, a policy or procedure or something where we need to be, we should be notified because, uh, you know, we're, we're paying the freight. Taxpayers are paying the freight, so we, we should be notified, and in the event that there's a vacancy, or regardless of why this person left or that person uh, taking a leave of absence or whatever, so that we can submit names that we feel would have a positive impact and effect on that board, or any board for that matter, because that, that's not happening right now. Yeah, well, no, if we just, the public appointment policy was passed tonight, as I said, HR will start to do a call out for the advisory councils or the, the advisory committees, your senior engagements, youth engagements, all those advisory committees. And if there's any other board members, they'll be coming back through, through HR. So, and if you have, if councillors have names, forward them on to the office of the mayor and they'll be part of the process. A form that has to be filled out. You can't just forward names to the mayor's office. You have to file an application, if I remember, and it goes to the HR and they'll seed through. There, there will be an application process similar to what we did in 2018 to 2022. Was there an application process? No, because uh, in the last week, the decision had to be made that Philip, who is Philip... Uh, applied and went through the vetting process yeah his turn was next yeah so Philip Philip is now the current chair and John Abbott is moving into the general manager's position they they required that immediate immediate decision because they have to keep moving Councilor Twill. I understand yeah that yeah they got to keep moving but you know what we've got to be notified too okay we're paying the freight on behalf of the taxpayers so we need to be notified of developments that are taking place whether it's this board or any other board okay because they are city of Charlottetown appointments 
by and, vote of resolution. And Philip, as as the nominee for tonight's uh, meeting as chair of the Charlottetown Civic Center Management Inc., is a very good decision going forward. Question called. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Councillor McAleer, yay or nay? Uh, yes, in favor. Councillor Drawn, yay or nay? In favor. What was it? 10 0? Okay. Now we have a motion, number five, motion to move into a closed session as per section 119, subsection 1A and E of the Municipal Government Act of Prince Edward Island. I need a motion to move into a closed session. Moved by Councillor Ramsey, seconded by Councillor Beck. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Councillor Drawn. In favor. In favor. Councillor McAleer. In favor. Okay.
Well, that we got those extra 15 minutes. Okay, you want to read that? No, not yet. I don't see you on the TV, Mr. Your Worship. Uh, moved by Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Jankoff and seconded by Ca Councillor Matart, the Council authorized the extension of interim CAO Donna Waddell's current employment agreement and further that the interim CAO employment agreement be extended up to March 31st, 2023. Questions called. Questions called. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Councillor McAleer. In favor, yes. Councillor Drawn. In favor. Okay, 10 0. Could we go to the next resolution? Motion. motion to adjourn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Julie, do you want a motion to adjourn? Okay. Mitchell? Mitchell? I don't know why. I mean, you were snoring? Yeah. Uh, no, I better, better watch myself. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, and have a great evening.